So, in an odd way, I currently feel very much how I imagine you must have felt when I surprised you by showing up near your house. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I thought it would be fun to do kind of like a face-off of nice girls versus nice guys. If you don't know what this phenomenon is, it's basically, hmm, how do I explain this? Just kind of self-proclaimed great catches and then they they put that on you, like you, sh you should want them. You should want me because I'm all of this, which is great. You know, love yourself, but not everybody is going to have the same feelings for you that you have for them or whatever. If that was an awful explanation, which I am quite sure that it was, don't worry, you'll catch on. You'll you'll see what I mean as, as we get into this. Wait, urgent message. Urban Dictionary defines this as a person who thinks that they are entitled to date or have sexual relations with someone else because they see themselves as a good person. Okay, first one, I read a little bit of it and I think this is gonna be a, a strong starter. So this is from the perspective of a 22 year old male. His friend's girlfriend who's 28 broke up with him. A few weeks later she asks if she can come cuddle. He tells her he's dating someone else and this is her response. Okay, she says, you think you have life so figured out and that's cute but I'm so so worried for when you learn that most of what you think will happen isn't going to. Other cool things will happen, but not because you're nice or have a great personality, because you knew when to know your place and you knew when to stand your ground. You unequivocally do not ever get to talk down to, make me feel bad, upset me in some dumb over the top way, go out of your way to be rude to me, because again, you're 22 and your name is something. When I need a flight booked, I get it booked. <laughs> Sorry, I sounded like goofy. When I need a flight booked, I get it booked. I command power. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to take seriously. I command power. I don't know why you're so obsessed with proving you're up to caliber with me. Why not just be a kid and be like, yeah, she's dumb, but she fucks, so. Most of the people in my life aren't NPCs, but they all started as ones. Just like your little ass right now. Why did she say it like that? She already didn't have any credit in my mind, but that was so fucking lame. Just like your little ass right now. Bitch, what? Holy shit. The guy says, I'm sorry, but I did not mean it in that way at all whatsoever. I should have thought about how I phrased that, but I did not mean it like that at all. And she says his name. You already went out of your way to tell me exactly which girl you're kissing and exactly what is going on with this little idiot. <laughs> which was like exponentially ballsy and fucking insane. If I told you who I've been fucking, it would destroy your entire world. Have some goddamn respect. This is what I mean about not shooting too soon with, we make such better friends. We'll see if you prove yourself still useful to me. That's where male friends live in my life. You aren't testing well so far. I'll give you a little leniency because everyone's messed up right now, especially in the communication department, but you're going to, and then it fades off and I don't have the rest and I wish that I did because this bitch is fucking crazy. Main character syndrome in abundance. Just imagine belittling everybody around you always. NPCs. Everyone around me is an NPC. I'm the only one that's real. Moving on, let's find a nice guy. Okay, so this one says, received this gem last night from a guy I saw three times and he showed up at my house without being given my address. Wait, what's a screed? Cause that's what the comments are saying. Imagine dating a guy and getting a screed every time you have a disagreement, what's a screed? Oh wait, I have a computer right here. What's a screed? A long speech or piece of writing. Damn, okay. New word to add to my vocabulary. How'd everybody know this word and I didn't? I'm a word girl. Let's get, let's get, what's our nice guy voice? Thank you for sharing the email address and implicitly agreeing to this format. I am hopeful that it will let me collect my racing thoughts into a presentable format. <laughs> I am hopeful. So in an odd way, I currently feel very much how I imagine you must have felt when I surprised you by showing up near your house. <laughs> What I mean is that we both made an entirely independent, significant decision, which greatly impacted the other. Can I get through this? I don't know. Sorry if you can hear my dog breathing really deeply. She's sleeping right now. It is clear to see how you did not have a say in my plan to just show up. You came out and there I was, without taking the time and hearing what you had thought of that idea, discussing it with you and checking if you'd had any objections. Similarly, you've come up with a resolution going forward without much of my input. What about my input? I just realized there's a shirt on that chair back there. It's fixed. Continuing on. I'll try to go over my thought process that morning once more and then move on to the larger picture perspective. It's Saturday morning and I'm excited. It's the weekend after a long work week. It's beautiful out. I get to paddleboard and it's only my fourth time ever. And foremost, I get to spend a good portion of the day 
getting to learn more about you. I cannot stick to a voice for this guy. Um, getting to learn more about you, the unique human I'm fascinated by, who has pleasantly surprised me every step of the way so far. As far as love languages, my most prolific one has to be acts of service. Hence, I texted you and offered getting you coffee. No, you already had some. Breakfast? No, not interested. <laughs> Another idea was to offer you a ride, and being there would make it easier for you to say maybe. So, 10 minutes before leaving, I typed in, and it blurs this part out, and the second result link had an address near the lake. I was on my way expecting we would laugh about it and think nothing of it. You've asked me if I've done something similar in the past and what the reaction was. I didn't show up somewhere unannounced, but yes, a few years ago, I've made a comment to someone I was beginning to see. Let's take a walk on Drake Street, which was met with a brief awe and followed with an, oh, okay, you're such a computer nerd and you found my registered address, how geeky. <laughs> Therefore, I didn't see it coming off as threatening or invasive. I've never been called either of those <laughs> by anyone. On the contrary, I have on more occasions than I recall been incorrectly called disinterested and cold. With that in the back of my mind, I, sometimes I have quirky, odd ways of showing I care and showing interest. I'd hate to be unoriginal. <laughs> this is scary. I've always taken pride in my ability to empathize and taking the time to evaluate multiple perspectives. When I was 18 years old, I lived in LA with my agent and got to meet many designers, stylists, makeup artists, photographers who were gay males. <laughs> Some were genuinely good-natured, while others were anything but. I remember receiving texts at 2.30 a.m. that read like, Hey, sweetie, it's Johnny, your stylist from last weekend. I got your number from Sebastian. Anywho, I really want to see that hot bot of yours tonight. <laughs> Anywho, I really want to see that hot bot of yours tonight. I want to play with it. Cool if I pick you up in 15? Okay, hit me up and don't make daddy wait. Being exposed to that at that age is not something any of my guy friends could relate to. The unwelcomed objectification was eye-opening. If we were to grossly estimate, so far we've opened up about maybe 10% of our interests with each other, maybe 1% of our general ideas, and we've known each other only 0.001% of our lives. The frame of reference is a complete abyss, yet I find this journey has been overwhelmingly positive, and sometimes take a step back to acknowledge how rare it is for so many factors to align for something special to take place. Small course corrections early on have a tremendous effect on the final destination, but one must be willing to take them. I remember hearing a psychologist once talk of a study about successful partnerships, where they average about 6 to 11 positive micro-interactions to one negative between the two parties. This really resonated. I've always gravitated towards interactions which are highly supportive, but not wholly one-sided. Disagreements are natural, and the ability to work through those is essential. So that's all I ask. Some kind of path forward to rebuilding the trust that was shaken for you. What can be done? What would you need or want? Short to medium term, is it space? Is it reassurance? Is it consistency? Is it time? Is it communication style? References? Anything? Let me present a quick illusion. Imagine taking a test. We're almost done, by the way, you guys. Um, imagine taking a test, an important one, and on a topic that really fascinates you, you prep for it hard for many days, weeks, and months, because you see the importance of passing and because there's an innate gratification of knowing the course material. This is fucking crazy. You finally take it and you ace it. You get the highest score in the class. Actually, it's the highest score ever. Yet, you're automatically accused of cheating with burden of proof laying solely on you. <laughs> there's one more page, okay? There have been others in the past who have performed outside of expected range by having the answer key, and your score fits this profile. You fit the test cheater profile. Even though the two paths to the high score are nothing alike, your integrity is forever tarnished. Your result is nullified. The credit is revoked. You are expelled from the accreditation body. You are blacklisted within the industry. You're forced to perform other work and left to wonder what could have been the end. This is the best comparison I can make to what this situation feels like for me. My intentions were mistaken for something else and I'm judged and punished for it in the most irredeemable of ways. With much sincerity, whatever this guy's name is. Holy f I almost don't even want to include this in the video because I don't know if anyone's going to sit through that, but it was a journey and I think I performed it well. Compliment me in the comments. <laughs> okay, here's our next nice girl. Okay, so this guy says, started talking to a girl on Tinder and we made plans to hang out tonight, but I was swamped at work and I was going to see if we could reschedule for next week. But before I could, I got this. Okay, so he says, hey, I may have to take a rain check for tonight. They gave me a ton of shit to do today. I'm sorry. She's like, dude, really? Listen, I'm not really into you anyways. The whole lake disgusting racist joke? I might be on her side. Hold on. Uh, racist joke was enough for me. I tried to give you a chance last night and I was gonna try to give you a chance tonight, but you're coming across as very rude, cross, overweight, nothing going for him like kind of guy. Like joking about people who kill people and eat them and kill minorities and eat them is not really my thing. Okay, period. I don't know why I'm saying it in that voice. I don't know what she sounds like. I just gotta give it that nice girl voice, you know what I mean? Okay, but let's continue, cause there's more. 
But thanks for wasting my time though, lol. Glad you think that you're going to one-up me. Not my fault that you can't manage your fucking time. I'm sure they're keeping your ass there till 10 o'clock at night. Good luck at your bachelor's party. Make sure to find some toothless hoe to sleep with <laughs> there. And then that one says view all, like there was more. There was more in that. Does he include that? I don't think he included that. But yeah, no, you fucking fat ass. You're giving I can't hold down a job. He's literally at work. You're giving I can't hold down a job and I'm a grown ass man. So I'm not interested, sorry. They gave me too much work to do today. So sorry about that. I'll be busy getting drunk with my girls tomorrow night too. Bye bitch, it's giving alcoholic. It's giving I can't hold down a job and I'm not a real adult, I'm a grown man in baby diapers. It's giving minority heat crimes they're funny. My God, you're so cool. I'm so sorry I didn't realize what a chance I lost with you. I don't even think any of that made any damn sense. I tried. I tried to kind of like comprehend, and maybe I just can't comprehend. Maybe that's maybe that's on me, but I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> wow, that's a bit nutty. Okay, let's find our next nice guy. This is a little quick one for for our next nice guy, but I have to read it. This girl says, "I'm not interested. Sorry." Looks at you firmly. I'll give you one more chance. I know you're tired of normal men, right? Bite slip. I can take you places you never thought possible. Just take my hand. Slowly outstretch his palm. She goes, oh, holy shit, dude. You need to stop messaging me before I puke. And then he puts, stares in confusion. But, but, okay. Slowly starts to walk away. Looks back sadly, suddenly angry. You know what? I'm a nice guy. I'm tired of saying it. Turns around with the force of a thousand suns. One day, I'm going to find a beautiful wife and spoil her with all of my money and wealth. You will still be sucking Chad cock, wishing, wishing you never rejected me because you are a dumb bitch. Have a nice life, cunt. Smirks and walks away, giving you the bird. Oh, and don't fuck with me again or you'll be sorry. Leaves. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Who's next? I might have found our next nice girl. She says, okay, I won't obviously, but what happens after I give you time? He goes, we can be friends and hang out sometimes, smiley face. She goes, but could you be open-minded for maybe seeing me romantically a bit more? Just like be open-minded for that. Like just be open-minded for that because we had such nice sex and everything. <laughs> he says, please respect what I want. I don't want that, I really don't. She goes, look, he says, I'm looking. And then she sent a video showing off my look. He says, oh, you look cool. She says, just cool. <laughs> Sends another video. You're not exclusive with anyone, so can compliment. LOL, 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 LOL. You were fing me two weeks ago, so LOL. And I'm not interested in a relationship with you of any sort. Aha. Uh -huh. She just said she was. She just said she was. He says, ah uh -huh, I guess. <laughs> he says, when you free tomorrow, can get my stuff, smiley face. She says, wanna have casual sex, LOL. Like for real, just fuck. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh -huh. We can make it not weird. He says, uh, no, I'm good, sorry, I'm out today. She goes, not today, in general. I'm out tonight too. What about you in general? He says, I think I'm okay, sorry, I just don't feel that with you anymore. Uh, and she says, lol, you're so pathetic. He says, uh -huh, okay. She says, not free tomorrow for you to collect your stuff too. He says, okay. She says, have work. And he says, okay. She goes, have fun fucking wanna be Amy Whitehouse. Have fun fucking wanna be Amy Whitehouse. <laughs> you know that one TikTok that's like, I miss Kurt Cobain so much, but it's um, a picture of Billy Ray Cyrus. I just feel like, I miss Amy Whitehouse so much. <laughs> he says, ah ha ha, White House? Bon Apple tea. <laughs> she says, wow, make fun of a typo. Collect your shit right now, actually, so I can block your stupid ass. <laughs> I'll find one more nice guy for us. Okay, so this girl posted, um, nice guy I met on Tinder. So he says, Yes, high energy, not ADD or ADHD. Thank you for that. I'm here trying to say fuck a paywall. My apologies. I'm dumb. I want to give a fuck, but no, I can't. Happy social media day. And then there's like a break in, because she hasn't been responding. He says, it's almost 1.30 and you have not bothered me once. Cool, see ya. I won't be mean. You are nice and I hope you make lots of money being a whore. <laughs> Fat ass, lazy, whale type bitch. <sighs> These are just absolute fucking roller coasters. Why are people so unhinged? I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, <laughs> she included his his uh his photo in here. Um, at least he's vaccinated. That's good. Uh, his about me. I don't know what the rest of it says because it's cut off, but it starts with looking for those consistent cuddles. Sorry. 
All right, I think that's gonna be it. I don't even know if I could call a winner as far as like who was the worst. <laughs> you're the winner if you're the worst. I don't wanna have to call it a tie, but everybody was so bad. <laughs> Everybody was so bad. Upon review while editing, uh, it's the nice guys. They were the, the worst, the winners. They take the trophy. Let me know what you think if you feel so inclined to comment on this video. Everybody's just losing their marbles. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. These were painful. These were painful to read, but they're also really entertaining. And I would keep going if it weren't for the fact that I'm starving right now. So um, I'm gonna go, but I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Wait, I'm gonna show you something now. <sighs> I'll find one more white, white guy. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I am. Um... I forget. <laughs> okay, one thing about me I'm the baddest alive. Interesting, interesting. I don't know how to do this. Sweet love. Lay down, stay with mommy, okay? I'm stay with mommy.